Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are back here once again for another exciting episode of the Team Galgo Wrestling Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Blitzball Champ, and on the other line via Skype is Hollywood Cinema. Say what's up. What's up? All is well? All is cool. So before we begin want to take this time to uh, give you, Hollywood Cinema, a shout-out. Um, Hollywood Cinema, just uh, him and Beautiful Nightmare, had their one-year wedding anniversary. Yeah, we did. Happy anniversary. Thank y'all. And um, may the Lord bless you with many, 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 many more. Gracias, senor. Okay. I am really, really excited about tonight's episode. Um mm. We got a good bit to talk about. Um, got to look back at uh, WWE Extreme Rules. Just a, a I recap. I actually watched. Yeah, me, me too. I was at the beach. I watched most of it at the beach over oh. the week that I was there. That must have been relaxing. Uh, yeah. Except for when you forget when you're at a beach house and you've forgotten that your charger for your phone and Kindle is at back at the Airbnb. Um, and you're a little too sauced uh, to go anywhere, so you just kind of say, I'm going to watch it in pieces until my phone's at 10% because I'm at the beach, so what do I give a shit? <laughs> How do you like you uh, doing uh, Air- Airbnb? I've heard good things. I think it's cool. I mean, it's just like a hotel, so it's a little more comfy. Mm-hmm. I just, I've, I, th- th- this one was a really nice one. It was uh, it was a downstairs um, at a beach house that was like three minutes from uh Beautiful Nightmare's mom's uh, beach house. So, oh, okay, cheap. very nice. It was, it was right down the street. Very by nice. accident. For accident. Oh, and I must also mention that I am rocking my Motor City Machine Guns three one three T shirt. My favorite. Nice. Tag so, um, yes, it is. Actually, you got the whole shirt in the in the camera. So. <laughs> oh, oh shit! Oh shit! But um, but yeah, very very happy that you had a great time. Mm-hmm. Um, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Extreme rules. Alrighty. First up, we had we had two kickoff matches. Um, first we had Andrade Cien Almas uh, face off and defeat uh Sin Cara in the first kickoff match. Um. Not surprised. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear uh, me? Make sure you're still there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I thought you were about to say something else, and I was like, hold up, he didn't say anything. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm not surprised at the outcome. I mean, you know. I, He's I getting a little bitch. I don't think uh, Andrade Cien almost has lost a match since coming to the, to the main roster. Um, Not there. Uh, at, at that point, no. Mm-hmm. You think about what happens later in the week, mm-hmm. which was a surprise to me that I was very, I was very surprised by, because that I had to watch in pieces um, at the beach as well. But yeah, we're talking about stream rolls right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it really, really wasn't a whole lot to it. Just, I mean, what we expected. An- another victory for Andrade Cien Almas on the. Uh, on a kickoff for, for a pay per view. Mm-hmm. And you expect that the heel to win that match because he's in a much better position than the uh, the face he was facing. And then again, you know, Sin Cara hasn't really done much of anything ever since the Lucha Dragons. So I mean, it is what it yeah, is. He jack shit. He was he was there to be used as a. As a instant heat for for uh, Almas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can Somebody agree with that. It. And they played up the fact that they know they've known each other for a while. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Good. Um, the next kickoff match, um, we had a kickoff tables match, um, where Sanity defeated the New Day. Yes, that was. Uh, I mean, that wasn't surprising. It, I mean, surprising only in the fact that it was just like, oh, okay, because the, the the incoming heel team generally wins that. Yeah, unless it's killed them. 
I did think it was a it was a good match though. Of course, it was great, and and the spot the end spot was great. Oh yeah, it was one of the better uh of the of those kind of of those kickoff matches. Usually, those things fucking suck. Yeah, and it seems like lately I, you don't see too many New Day promos these days. No, they've uh kind of calmed down because they were getting a little too annoying. I mean, they 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 well, I mean, technically, if you think about, it, they had that one with uh Kane and uh what's his face Daniel Bryan um Daniel Bryan mm-hmm. yeah they had that one and th- and that was a pretty long one mm-hmm. they got beat up and then uh they did the backstage promo with all the NSYNC quotes and shit so <laughs> oh yeah but um very very good match for a kickoff match um you know I was I was happy uh not surprised with the outcome but um yep. Good match. Yeah. Definitely a good match. Okay. At Extreme Rules, we saw the crowning of new Raw Tag Team Champions. As the so B- we did, Adam. Bring it nowhere. As the B-Team defeated Woken, Matt Hardy, and Bray Wyatt. They have been on a roll lately. I was expecting to turn that into like a... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> my feeling is that they... I wasn't expecting them to make the Raw Tag Team Championships. Not a joke, but a joke. Because were they even featured on... Um, any, well, they, they were actually featured when uh, Roman Reigns was going out to go face Bobby Lashley, which is interesting. But Yeah. But I don't know, man. Since the whole disbanding of the Miz Taraj, they've been doing their thing. Yeah, they finally won a championship. Good yeah. for them. So, um, makes me wonder, you know, how long that'll last. And it was good to see both of the Rotunda brothers. Oh. Right, it's not last long. They're gonna lose that shit. To, they're gonna lose that shit to what's been joke. Um, off of the pain, guarantee it. Yeah, but how quickly though? Like I'm saying, SummerSlam. Oh wow you you don't you don't think they'll last past SummerSlam? I didn't see any updates. Cause that's the, yeah, that's, no, the that's the next pay per view. Jeez. Yeah, I don't, dude. Do you see the B team be in any like substantial reign? I don't. They are a transitional thing. If, if if I've ever seen one. I mean, who knows? They may end up turning face. I don't know. I mean, they are kind of faces because they're so doofy. <laughs> but um, I mean. I, <sighs> I don't know. Like, I, I get what you're saying, but it's like they they got the titles for a reason. And it kind of shows, you know, post Miz Taraj that they've been successful. And it's just a matter of how long are they going to allow them to ride this success. Yeah. Because, I mean, they have fans. It's just, dude, it's not, it's not going to, it's not going to, it's just, it's, it's a thing Mark my words. It is there just to get the belt onto the offensive pain without destroying the the leaders of worlds. Mm. Guarantee it. Have to keep an eye out for that. There's no way they believe in those two. I, no. Absolutely not. <laughs> wow. Don't believe in the son of Kurt Henning and not, the uh, son of uh, um, IRS. Or one of the sons yeah, of IRS. Yeah, you see what they've done with those guys uh, in all this time. So hell no, I don't believe none of that shit. I just do not see it. Um, it'd be nice. Yeah, but we'll see what happens. Um, next up, uh, something that at least I was really happy about: Finn Balor defeated Constable Baron Corbin. I was really happy about that. Were you Were you surprised? At the outcome, yeah, no, yeah, I was like, I was like, Ugh, this is exactly what I expected to happen. It was, and even the way it played out too, because he was just getting the shit kicked out of him to begin with, and all of a sudden makes like a run, and it's just like, oh, okay, <laughs> like, oh, all right, so he's uh, he's real cool when he's um, all of a sudden he just needs like a little comeback, and he's good. He has like the super Cena comeback, but he's never gonna have the super Cena friggin' win record for shit. Are you talking about Finn Balor? Yeah, oh yeah. Um, 
Only time will tell. If it does happen, uh, it'll be a long ways from now. Oh, yes, it will. And but, I feel like a lot of people are injured. Yeah, I just feel like they need to get him They need to get him another, another singles title. He hasn't had a singles title since um, Universal Championship. And, you know. No, he's been a non-factor. Yeah. Every, just, I mean, so even weird. if they could just get him the Intercontinental title, I'd be happy. Anything would be a good idea. Yeah. I don't know why it hasn't happened yet. But, um... Oh! Um, there's something I wanted to ask you, but I'll do it. I'll ask you after Extreme Rules. It's just just got to get get your thoughts on this. But, um... Okay. Anything else on this match? Uh, no. Okay. Moving on. And... Ugh. Oh, great. SmackDown Women's Championship match. Ah, uh-huh, yeah, Carmella, Oscar. I am at the point where I now see Carmella as Maurice 2.0. Right. Carmella is clearly, clearly Maurice 2.0. Oh yeah, man, she's the uh, she's the cowardly heel. Of course, she's going to and keep it on. Makes me sick to my stomach. I mean, first of all, the whole idea of suspending James Ellsworth in a shark cage was already a dead giveaway. I yeah. mean, come on. Like, drops drop stuff in the middle of the ring. So, like, come on. Like, that's too Every easy. Time. Every time. Although that spot with her hitting her head of the cage was pretty sweet until the cage bounced when it hit her. <laughs> My uh. thing is just... <sighs> There's two there's two problems that I have with this. Two problems that I have with this. One, what happened to the Carmella that we had back in NXT? Like the nice one? The heel? No, no. The the I mean at the time she was face, but she at least made efforts to wrestle. Had a pretty cool um submission, but she was doing stuff. She was actually doing stuff. You know, and she was improving. She was doing yeah. stuff. And secondly, like, it is so bad when not only do you continuously get dominated in matches, but to get dominated by somebody like Asuka consistent, consistently, especially oh, yeah. with the point of how badly she was running like a little fraidy cat during the uh, mixed match challenge, phrase Freddy Cat, good lord, and and now, yeah. and now all of a sudden Carmella's beaten Oscar twice. Are you kidding me? Oh, and and on uh, Carmella's defense, she did do it by heel tactics, so it doesn't. It actually helps Oscar because Oscar still looks um, like a you know a world beater. <sighs> My thing is what what really has to be done for them to finally put the title on her. Uh, I don't know. And and that's what upsets me, because this reminds me of the same frustrations that I had with Gail Kim back in her second return in WWE. It's like, are you serious? Oh, yeah, of course she was again when she was getting mad. Like, and it just, it makes me sick. Even more than dang on James Ellsworth. Because, I mean, you know, he's going to get... It's gonna get dominated. He's the comedy relief, but like, but like, come on, like, why? He's gonna get wrecked every chance he gets. Like, Carmella can't even mount any offense. That's what's so bad about this. Yeah, oh no, she well, she she does for a little bit. She does whenever she needs to. She's the ultimate opportunist. I just. You know me, bro. I just have a big, big pet peeve against heels. Chick shit heel winners, which is kind of wrestling in a nutshell. They, they, chick, they love chick and shit heels. Like. Seth Rollins was a chick and shit heel. And he had the corporation behind him. Yeah, uh, but he actually. BBL, Edge, Chris Jericho. 
Some yeah, of the but greats. I don't ever know of any times where any of them were supremely dominated in matches. Mm, John Cena versus uh, well, no, that was I mean, this Brock Lesnar is a little bit different. I mean that that's that's my only complaint. Just with heels like that, it's just I don't I get the interference, I get the cheating, but at least have some sort of window where you look like you can hold your own. That's all. Well, I'm yeah, asking. I mean, and I well, I feel like she will once she the, the the SmackDown roster doesn't really lend itself to that though. Oscar doesn't lend herself to that kind of portrayal. Is that's not really. She she doesn't have anybody that she can really should be able to go up against like Charlotte. She can't do that with. Now if she fight, faces Becky, maybe. But do you want Becky to feel like she should feel like she's better than 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 her, like than Carmella, which she is, right? Yeah. So everybody that Carmella is going to face on the SmackDown roster is better than her, and she, and she kind of has to as a champion. She has to be portrayed that way because she's. We all know she's not on the same level as other two, of the any of those other women, because she's been doing it forever. Like all these women have been doing it forever. She's the newest one out of all of them. All oh. of them. I just I'm, all these other girls have been around for years and have a name for themselves and have earned a certain clout that Carmella hasn't. So she can't be this world beater because that makes those other girls look ineffective, and that's not that's not what you want. No, I just, I'm just ready for either Oscar to get her first main Oscar roster be title, she or totally be Becky Lynch gets I'd back be. on the on the the queen of the oh. hill. Becky Lynch has been undefeated here as of late. Yeah, like she's, she's been, been on a, on a long. She wrecked Mandy trip. Rose uh, a couple days after this. You know, and it's like, <laughs> oh man, what. Whatever, I'm 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 done with this match. Like it, it's only yeah, it wasn't up. great. And the shark and shark cage matches are literally the worst. Yeah, it's just, oh, it's so stupid. Like <sighs> anyway, well, at least I can be happy about something. Shinsuke Nakamura is the U is the new United States champion. So are you happy about that? Because I thought it was awesome, but I was like, I don't know if Jason's gonna really like this. The, the way it went down, low blow. Um, I'm it was not... it was a fun way to begin a match. I love it, and then but I don't I didn't get the Randy Orton shit in like this. I'm not thrilled about how it went down, Should but be I'm happy that at least one of the two came away with Asians. gold. One of the two, one of the two Asians became champion. As long as the, I, I love the fact that you just said you were glad that one of the two uh, were champions. The two, the two Asians, your favorite. Because honestly, if none of them walked away as, t- as champions, I would have been I would have been even more angry. <laughs> yeah, but um, the Randy Orton attack makes no sense. I that confuses me. It doesn't make any sense. He's heel again, so whatever. But yeah, and I don't mind him being heel. They, they, they've done they've done nothing to explain why Randy Orton just started attacking Jeff Hardy. Yeah, I don't give two shits because I thought Jeff Hardy was done for a while. That's the way it was positioned, like he was uh, about to take time off for an injury, to heal from an injury, but well, dang, whatever. It wasn't that long ago that he came back. I know, but he had like a pinched nerve or something. That's why he wasn't doing the swanton dive. Or oh, swanton yeah. bomb. He, he hasn't really been utilized. But that, they swanton. said it was, it was said that he had stopped doing it because of the pinched nerve in his back. I mean, that he's not getting any younger. Yeah, no, he needs to stop doing it. So, there's a reason why Je- there's a reason why Matt doesn't do the friggin' leg drop from the top rope anymore. He still does the double axe spine. handle. Yes, but he does not do the leg drop because that leg drop crushes your spine and fucks it up. Especially from the top. Yeah. Sure there's no joke, man. That that's that's why I always like the leg drop, but when I found that out, that it's just like, yo, that's why Hogan's shit is fucked up. Cause he picked the lamest looking move that did the most damage to himself. Wait, it damages his spine? Yeah, because if you think about it, you're jumping down onto your ass every time. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, you're just just compressing your spine every time you do it. Hmm. And Hogan did it for a long ass time. 
I mean, Sigma think that, Buddy. Um, hmm. That's interesting. That's really, really interesting. Cause I never thought. I don't know. When was the last time you saw uh, Jeff Hardy use the Swanton Bomb? It's been since he came back. He had. He's only done it like twice, I think. Okay. Because now he just he and and they said that was why he was when he did do it the way that he was just landing on people because he wasn't trying to protect anybody anymore because he used to try to protect people. Um, yeah. The way that, like now he just lands square on your fucking chest and knocks all the air out of you. Yeah. Over the years, the way he's landed it has definitely changed. And I, and the only reason I even noticed that was because I was listening to uh, Edge and Christian's podcast and they were talking. They were, they were like, oh, they were talking to Randy because they were like, no, they were, you know, they were talking to somebody and said that Brock hates, he, that Brock is scared of the Swan Time Bomb, um, really? like legitimately scared of taking it, like, and that, and that was a, that was an issue when they used to, you know, had their matches back in the day, but he was, he was freaked out by it. Um, Interesting. Which, and now, when I, if you watch their matches together, the way he does the Swan Time is a little bit different. Um, hmm. That's yeah, really so interesting. It, and it was like, yeah, because it, it and Ed said it, it, Ed and Chris said it used to freak them out too, because it was just like, he's coming down, and it's just like, is he gonna land it's like square on top of you, or just kind of graze you with his shoulders? Um, well, it is a top rope move, so it is a it is a it is a tough move if you're the one taking it, because you 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 don't know how how it's gonna come to you. Wow, that's you just kind of so you know, like it's interesting that that is the one that freaks people out. So is that like I guess more devastating to take than say like a four fifty splash or a moonsault? I, according to how people uh, how Edge and Christian described it, yeah. Wow. To 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 people in the wrestling industry, that that's the one that freaks them out. Ooh, wow. Yeah, it's weird that that's the move, but it's interesting to hear which ones uh, wrestlers hate taking. It's just like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Like you have to position yourself a certain way. You can't do this. You can't do that. Because I yeah, feel you're, like you're, a dang old elbow drop, like, just the way, like, you initiate it and coming down, like, I always well, thought, see, like, you... oh, elbow ahead. drop, when you watch it, the... no, no, I'm just saying, whenever you watch the elbow drop, it it's, they're usually hitting with their armpit, like, right, they usually are kind of laid out, so they're kind of, you know, like, like, their whole weight's usually not coming on top of you. Right, right. Usually, um. That fucking swan time is all body at this point. He he just landed. Who did he, he did to somebody? He just landed right on their solar plexus, just like boof. I was like, ooh, 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 ooh that sucked. Because I know, because I know there were a few times right. where like Jeff Hardy has landed the swan time like back first, and like his neck kind of whiplashes yeah. a little bit, and it's just just like yeah, ooh. it's just dangerous. And you know, and also. Yeah. Even in the matches where, like, another time where, um, I think, I think he was going up against John Morrison. <coughs> and I think at one point, uh, not, this wasn't in their title match, but there was one, one match they had where I think Jeff Hardy did the swanton and he had the knees up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that just was like, ooh, like, I would have rather them move out of the way than get the knees up to counter that move because that looks like it would really hurt the other Just person smaller. like yeah so it's not me. so I mean it's just one of those things where like I think with the age that Jeff Hardy is now and just the amount of punishment his body has taken over the years like I think it's about that time where he may want to just either stick to uh, twist of fate, or maybe, maybe perhaps a a new, much simpler finisher. Twist of fate is perfect. I think he's the. I do like his his face paint though, with the eyes on the closed part. I do like that quite a bit. Yeah, same here. It, it looks like his eyes are open when he closes his eyes. It's good. But it's um, good. But both Hardys no longer have gold. Nope. And, and, um, awesome. Shinsuke now has his first singles title since uh, leaving. Yeah, he does. He is the champion of the United States. Yeah, God bless him. Um, next match. 
Oh, man, he just cannot catch a break. So, a technicality, Kevin Owens defeated Braun Strowman in the Steel yep. Cage match. Now, okay, I heard a motherfucker, who was it? I don't know who it was, I think it was uh, Coach. This is it, it was on Monday night, but mm-hmm. still, I got to reference this. Mm-hmm. Him saying that, he's like, I don't believe I've ever seen anybody... That happened to anybody. I'm like, you mean to tell me you've never seen somebody, like, in person, seen somebody, like, thrown off a cage? Dude, you were around during the era of Shane McMahon versus Kane, my G. You were around. Mankind. Yeah. But, I mean, he wasn't wasn't a commentator then. But he sure as hell was around when when Jeff Hardy was facing um, anybody. Or Rikishi. It happened to Rikishi. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, dude, you've been around when people get thrown off of cages all the time. He got a ruptured spleen from it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, B, like, you, do you not realize that we remember this shit? Like, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know why they even had him say that shit. I was like, you gotta be shitting me. Yeah. You've been around for a while. Yeah, that's, yeah. I've watched you, and I've had to hear you speak on shit. Because he used to um, host a uh... Saturday Saturday mornings, uh, WWE action, like uh, a, I think it was yeah. Live Wire or something. It was. Yes, something. it was. I liked Live. No Live Wire. I remember Live Wire. I liked Live Wire. Yeah. So watch it all the time. So I mean, man, that's that was pretty ridiculous. But uh Kevin Owens gets mangled, beaten, torn, destroyed, gets thrown off, wins the match. Mm. Braun Poor Strowman guy. just can't catch a break. Just, can't catch a break. It's it's just ridiculous. Like, uh, yes, please, baby. Like, really, he's better off just. I don't know. Cash in his dang on briefcase and just get it over with. Yeah. Like. And it's sad that it has to come to that, but just just do it. Just, yeah. just do it. It'd be um, nice. Anyway, the Bludgeon Brothers successfully defended their SmackDown Tag Team Championships against Team Hell No. After attacking Kane and yeah. breaking Stone beforehand. Yeah. Um... I mean, what? I mean, what'd you think? Uh, it was whatever. <laughs> I was kind of annoyed that I was like, "Oh god, we're definitely not getting title change today." But okay, whatever. Do what you're gonna do. Cause they ain't got nothing to do with me. Yeah. You know? I mean, I I was hoping that Miz would get involved, but they just had to come out after talk shit. Yeah. Like, just timing-wise, I just don't think they did well with it. But, I mean, will the team continue on? I don't know. Like, Yeah, I don't, I don't think so, but it'll be, I don't know what they're doing. Because they, they were barely featured on, uh, on um, what's the name, on SmackDown, so I, just, I don't know. I guess this was just one way to usher uh, back in the return of Kane and just make it, I guess... <laughs> special but yeah <laughs> i guess that's really all i can say about that um next up wow i cannot believe it roman reigns lost a match on a pay-per-view yes he did he won a clean pin clean spear into a pin bobby lashley was very surprised defeated roman reigns and yes, he did. That match was not great, but whatever. Yeah, I'm just happy that he got came away with a victory. But um, you know what, though? It ends up not really mattering at all. Well, it all is going to come down to... Uh, Find out. This next showdown. But I, it likely didn't matter. But it's yeah. kind of disappointing because I thought it was going to go with Bobby Lashley out of this because it was like, yeah, okay. He's no more contender. Let's do it. But I'm like, nope, let's do it again. I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. 
And it wouldn't sur- would it surprise you if Roman Reigns won? No, no, I expect Roman Reigns to win. Really? Yeah. Just because they got a hard on for that dude, they're gonna get they're gonna make us have to watch Roman Reigns do shit no matter what. Like they they do not give a fuck. We're gonna have to watch this dude do something. They're gonna force him. It's just, it's they do not give a fuck. Yeah, it's it's horrible. It's really really horrible. I am I am spawned out by it. Cause it's real dumb. Puppy dog pals. That's a show. All righty. Next up, we had the one match that was actually tagged an Extreme Rules match. Um, mm-hmm. The Raw Women's Championship. Um, Alexa Bliss defeated Nia Jax. Yes. Um. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. It's expectedly stupid. Yeah. And just like that, what little run Nia Jax had just... Nia Jax's run is over. Yeah, and that was rather quick. Yes, it was. A little too quick. But, but I mean, it's, it's Alexa's the top the top uh, female heel. So, I mean, she's going to get that treatment. She... Yeah, and she's a chicken shit heel too, but at least she wins. Yeah... Her matches have been hit or miss. Her promos have been great. But she's she's the top female heel. Mm-hmm. But I'll take her over Carmella any day. Well, Alexa Bliss is definitely better than Carmella. Um, definitely. This next match, I truly feel, was match of the night. Um, and that was the WWE Championship match between AJ Styles and Rusev. Of course, it's got Rusev Day. This was oh. an excellent match. And honestly, at one point, it, it looked like Ru- Rusev was going to pull it off. But, I mean, of course, that wasn't going to happen. But it looked convincing. Yeah. It would have been nice. It definitely looked convincing. Um... And with AJ Styles' title defense, I believe they announced that he's now been um, WWE champion for, I think, 253 days? Six months, man. Six months. Six months. Wow. Been champion for six months. Fucking ridiculous. Not ridiculous, but it's kind of nuts. And I think he's going to be champion. When I think for... about it, they did. Well, yeah, he's going to be champion for at least... At least until SummerSlam. But I don't even know he's going to fa- he's going to face the SummerSlam, so I guess we'll find out. Shoot, I think he's going to be champion even after the the game comes out. I don't know, man. Only he's the cover. He's oh, the it's cover. likely, but him making it till October. Oct- I don't know. If I said October like that. October. Uh, until making it to October seems kind of insane. But it's possible. Yeah, I could see him making it that far just because you know it'd be good. To get the game launched with him still champion, you know, and him being the cover athlete. Yeah. But um, this was an excellent match. I really enjoyed this match. Um, both competitors looked great. And, um, yeah. You saw AJ Styles pull off a very nice, phenomenal forearm. Mm-hmm. Good match. Yeah, great match. That was my match of the night. And then our main event. Um, we had the 30-minute Iron Man match where the Intercontinental Champion Dolph Ziggler defended against Seth Rollins and um, was able to pull off the victory uh, via draw. Or no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, he got the... It was a draw initially. Kurt Angle restarted the match. Mm-hmm. And... Drew McIntyre, out of nowhere, interferes, even though he was banned from ringside. But there's that whole technicality of, the match restarted. And, I mean... Yep. It is what it is. I mean... I don't really like that finish, but I mean, 
I'm not surprised. I, I figured Dolph was going to retain. Yeah. But I am happy to see uh, Drew McIntyre step out and compete into the um, the main title picture. I am happy to see that. Well, at least at least in one show, on one Raw, he did. Yeah. So I hope there will be follow up attempts to that. We shall see. And that is Extreme Rules. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to Raw. Now, a couple of things. So, we had two specific matches. Two triple Mm -hmm. threat matches. Yep. To determine who will face each other for the number one contendership to Brock Just to Lesnar. get back to extreme rules, basically. Yeah. Or so, we, because we couldn't make that a number one contenders match. We had to make it for nothing and then just have to get it to it again. Yeah. So, of course, you know you had the winners of you know Roman Reigns and Bobby Lashley. Roman Reigns defeated Finn okay. Balor and Drew McIntyre. While Bobby Lashley... <laughs> Bobby Lashley defeated Elias and Seth Rollins. So these two will face off yet again. But this time it'll actually mean something. Yeah, um, whatever. Just way to get Roman Reigns to win the one contendership without having to win on a pay per view. Yeah. Whatever. Um Authors of Pain continue to show their dominance by defeating Titus Worldwide. Uh, um, you know what's funny about that? What? I rewatched Raw on um, Hulu, and that match is not included. Really? <laughs> Dang. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that sucks. Um, Sarah Logan actually got a victory over Ember Moon. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, I guess the... Uh, but doesn't Ember, Ember Moon have like a, a future title opportunity? Yes. I believe Yeah, they just forget correct. about? Her. Yeah, I believe she's, she's not correct. in line. She's not in line for Ronda Rousey? Well, I know Who hasn't that, won anything? I know that Ronda Rousey um, uh, still has the title shot at SummerSlam. She has she a title. Yeah, she has a title shot at some. So yeah, you're I, right. Because what you call it should be in front of the line over her. Yeah, truthfully, yeah, you're right. But it's Ronda Rousey. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. But, um. It... Uh, the B team. Beat the Ascension. Uh, I'm not even gonna like. <sighs> I've already vented my frustrations over how badly the Ascension have been treated. So it's, yeah, it's nothing yeah. new. Just gotta um, be by the champs. Mojo Raleigh destroyed Tyler Breeze. Um, yeah, that was. That. I'm not too sure when Fandango is supposed to be coming back. He's at least going for like a year. A year? Really? That long? Well, six, six, at least six or seven months, so I'm going to say a year. Do you remember what the injury was? Uh, something on his leg. Oh. Dang. Yeah, um, and dang. Yeah. So, interesting. Uh, so, Alicia Fox and Dana Brooke defeated Bailey and Sasha Banks by disqualification. But you have the backstage segment with Bailey and Sasha Banks. Um, well, they were supposed to. The, the loser was supposed to um, leave some uh, leave Raw, go to SmackDown. Was was that was that made official? That was a stipulation by uh, Kurt Angle, and they were talking about it. I thought I thought it was um, you know if this doesn't work out, then you know one of you will have to go to. 
SmackDown, but they, but I guess they, they made it seem like it was that match. They made it seem like it was that match because if they lost, they were they weren't going to be able to. Well, because that would mean it wasn't working out. Well, even then, even even then, who gets sent to SmackDown? Right. Well, it made it seem like whoever uh, got the, got pinned. Well, that's the thing. Nobody got pinned. Which is what I'm saying. Which is why I think that. Which is why that's the way that ended. But it and just it, it just makes me wonder, like, you know, Sasha Banks voicing her feelings, and ah, I don't know. That was that that was just kind of weird. In a very weird way. It's very so, weird. So I I don't know. Fuck it up, trust. Um, and then Dolph Ziggler just made Bobby Roode look like trash. Mm. Like, I really feel strongly that he is no longer the glorious Bobby Roode. He's not. He's not very glorious. He loses a lot. Yeah. Like, I thought I thought he was gonna win because they set it up to have that character win, but yeah, but. Ah, uh, poor Bobby Roode. Yeah, he's dead in the war. Yeah. He's been Finn Ballard. Yeah. Well, I still have a little bit of hope for Finn Balor, but... I don't. <laughs> also, when the hell did Triple Threshers automatically become no disqualification? When did what now? Triple Threats. Uh, Finn Balor was tuning up that fool with him cha- that damn chair, like, and they were like, it's legal! And I'm like, hold up, what? Yeah, now that you mention it. Yeah, why was that a thing? Yeah, that's weird, because I don't remember it being announced that it was a no disqualification triple threat. I eat a little bit, because it had no bearing on anything except for that sequence. But I guess if, I guess when you think about it, if disqualifications counted and, and like, someone used a chair, who would win by disqualification? Oh, it would be the person who got attacked. Like it always is. But see, yeah. there's, a, there's a thing, though. Those friggin', um, that's the way it's always been, though. There, it, triple threat matches have not always been no disqualification. Because why the hell would not every, wouldn't everybody be using weapons in triple threat matches? I guess you're saying for the longest time, if that wasn't the case in every, yeah, in every triple never, threat match. Yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I see every what you're triple, saying. Every triple threat with a heel in it would have the heel whacking the shit out of somebody with a chair. But it doesn't. Ever, yeah, ever that's, that's a fair point. But ECW would do the whole uh, elimination style, though. Right. It'd be two pinfalls. Yeah, that's which makes sense. That's fair. That's 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 definitely fair. It's one of, it's one of those weird rule things where it's just like you guys are not you guys are breaking your own logic now. Like I watch this shit like a soap opera, so I'm paying attention to continuity. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. And then, of course, uh, Ronda Rousey attacked Alexa Bliss. Yeah, she had like the she had her she had her hair all greased up and uh, slicked back, super cholo. It's kind of insane. I'm like, who the hell put all that gel in your hair? How long did that take you? You know. Yeah, it was weird. It was it was a weird hairstyle. I wasn't really knowing what to make of it. But I'm done with Raw. You have anything else for Raw? Hell no. Raw was kind of garbo. All right. SmackDown. <laughs> um, of course, once again, Becky Lynch with another victory over Mandy yes. Rose. Killing. Samoa Joe fought the perfect 10. Beat the perfect yes. ten. Perfect ten tried to attack him. Didn't really yeah. work out so well for him. Um, Eric Young uh, beat Kofi Kingston of the New Day. With a nice ending sequence with Killian Dane tossing Xavier Woods into Kofi. Yeah, dude, Killian Dane is a beast. Yes, he is. Um, 
Honestly, SmackDown was kind of weak. Yeah, but it was much better than Raw was. I did enjoy the match with um, AJ Styles and Andrade Cien Almas. That was a pretty yeah, good match. Yeah, as I was saying, Andrade finally lost, and he tapped out. Yeah, tapped out to the, the calf crusher. Yeah, uh, Selena was not happy. Yeah, but, I mean, like you said, it was his first loss since getting on the main roster. So, I mean, she can't be bugging out too badly. <laughs> no, but she's she's like ridiculous, so I would expect her to be extra. By the way, you knew that uh, Selena Vega was um, is Austin Aries' uh, fiance, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. She, uh, her real name, I believe, is Thea Trinidad. Thea yeah, Trinidad. Which she did wrestle as that back in NXT before she became a um, manager. I forget. Wing. But um, and of course, you know Jeff Hardy fired back at Shinsuke Nakamura, won by disqualification, yep. and there's uh the Viper yet again to pull on his gauges and his ears. Yeah, I know that was that weird. Hurt like crazy. Yeah, that was pretty gnarly. And then apparently the Miz tried to put together a funeral for Team Hell No. But of course, right. Daniel Bryan wouldn't have him that. I watch out. Yeah. Me. What was that? But hello. Yeah, I'm here. But I feel like you know, I mean, yeah, the Miz and Daniel Bryan can have their showdown now. But I just felt like this was this could have been much early. Yeah, it was. I don't know why they waited. Yeah. Just so that Miz could have something to talk shit about. Yeah, I guess so. Mm-hmm. But um, that's pretty much all I have for SmackDown. Do you have yeah, any? SmackDown wasn't uh, too crazy. Alrighty, two hundred five live. Two hundred five. Actually, that's the uh, one show I did not watch. Um, it was pretty cool. Um, TJP. Got revenge against Noam Dar, which was actually a good match. It was a really yeah. good match. Um, but yeah, made him tap out to the knee bar. Ooh. Um, Drew Gulak faced, uh, you know, pretty much a local. Um, Leo Rush and Akira, Akira Tozawa was good. That was that was pretty back and forth, but uh, Leo Rush was able to hit the final hour and uh, get the oh. victory. Nice. Yeah, he's getting a push if they had to beat a key. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could see him, you know, eventually, maybe possibly becoming a Cruiserweight champion at some point. Um, So it's been announced that uh, Mustafa Ali, Hideo Itami, TJP, and Drew Gulak will okay. uh, battle for number one contendership to Cedric Alexander's uh, Cruiserweight Championship. Fatal four way incoming. Yep. Um, who who do you like? Who do you like to get that title opportunity? Uh, shit, I don't even know. So we know that uh, Cedric Alexander has, you know has beaten Mustafa Ali. I mean, he beat him to win the title. Um, he successfully defended against Hideo Itami, which was a great match. Mm-hmm. Um, he hasn't fought TJP yet for nope. the title. And TJP just finished the... I guess he just finished the thing with... Um... No, I'm Dar. Or... Or what were you saying? Oh, um... Like I thought the Noam Dar thing would be more of a thing, but I guess he's his push is not going to continue. Um, I don't know. We'll have to see. I mean, they're one and he one. He just lost to TJP, and they already got TJP in a fatal four way, the championship after beating him once. Um, I don't think it'll be over. You know, I just feel like this. You know, Noam Dar still, you know, is still making a comeback. I mean, he's only really had two matches. I since know. coming back. So, I mean, I don't think he's going to get that push so quickly. But, 
I'm actually surprised they didn't put him in there rather than like a niece or Murphy. Yeah, yeah now that you mentioned I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Um, Seems odd. So let's see. Uh, and and the of course the fourth competitor is Drew Gulak. Um, hmm. I'd say Gulak. He's the only one that really even has would be good. I feel like I feel like it's going to come down to Gulak or TJP only because um, Gulak hasn't had a title shot. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's ne- he's never had a title shot, so I could see him being the front runner to be the next number one contender. Um, TJP, I don't think has had a title shot since uh, losing the cruiserweight title. I feel I like I don't think. I feel like he. Well, he was. Yeah, he. No, Adrian Neville. That's right. That's right. Neville. That's right. I forgot that's about that. Um, but that was so long ago. Yeah, but Gulak deserves it more than he does, or is more, you know. As yeah, far as I, 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 I will agree with that. that. Haven't got it. He's he's the person that should get it, get a shot, and it'd be a good way to play it off. But it's interesting. Uh, Mustafa Ali is the only face in this fatal four way. Which I, f- I feel like he, there's no way he's winning. What? I would be um, really, really shocked if he won this. I don't think yeah. he will. No, I don't think they would do that. Yeah. Like, I feel like the Gulag makes the most sense. Yeah. But I, I'll say Gulag's the favorite, but it would not surprise me if TJP got that opportunity. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, I'd rather... Hideo Itami, not so much, because he just recently had an opportunity. I don't see that happening. Um... So yeah, look forward to um, see how that turns out. But um, I don't know, bro. Who do you think? Who could you see dethroning Gulak. Uh, Cedric Alexander? Gulak. Gulak. Mm-hmm. Okay. has been there, buddy. Because it's been a while since there's been a a heel. No. Wait. Enzo Amora was the last heel champion yep okay and then he left it got vacated cedric won okay okay well fair enough fair enough wow now that i think of it it's kind of been back and forth face heel, face heel, face heel face heel face heel champions yeah yep because because when you think about it tjp um the brian kendrick Rich Swan, Neville, Tazawa, Neville. Um, who won? Who won after Neville? Austin Aries. Austin Aries never won, did he? No. Uh, he had three opportunities, but never won. Kalisto was champ for a second. Enzo, then a Kalisto, then Enzo again. Okay, yeah. So it's been face heel, face heel, face heel. Mm-hmm. So wow. he goes. Yeah. They've been keep. They've been keeping that trend. Mm-hmm. Then again, I feel that's kind of the way NXT has been too. Uh, yeah. That's usually yeah. how it goes. You have a good guy rise up to be the bad guy, then another bad guy rises up to be the good guy, then so on and so forth. And then again, it is sort of rare to see a heel versus heel title match where it's a title Here's change. Your- Mm-hmm. It doesn't it rarely happens. Uh, it happens occasionally. But, uh, I would like to see Dolph it happen versus, a little bit more. Well, Dolph Ziggler coming out and uh, cashing in on uh, what's his face on uh, Alberto Del, R- Del Rio. Yeah, but but heel on heel. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Technically, um, Seth Rollins cashing in on Brock Lesnar heel on heel, but there was a face involved. Yeah. And Roman Reigns. That's usually how that works. But um, yeah, I would love to see it happen happen a little more. It it would just be nice. Nice to vary it a little bit. Yeah. Um. 
Let's see. That's pretty much it for 205 Live. Um. Oh, one other thing. What do you think about this this trio of Drew Gulak, Brian, the Brian Kendrick, and Gentleman Jack Gallagher? I, I don't understand it. I don't understand it, but I don't understand most of the pairings on 205 Live. I guess they needed a trio to go up against the Lucha House Party. See, but here's the thing, though. Uh, that'd be cool if they weren't using, like, Nice and uh, Buddy Murphy to fight them, too. That's true as well. That's a good point. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I still thought Nice was going to eventually turn face, but they pulled yeah, that they, back. They freaked that up. Yeah. Freaked it up real good. But, um... To be honest with you, I don't see Leo Rush being a, a heel for, for very long. I don't know. No, Just, but he's really good being cocky. Like he's doing a co- they have a lot of heels on that show. Yeah. Yeah, they do. I just a lot more heels and faces. If I could think of one of them that would defect to face, it would probably be Leo Rush. Only yeah. because of his size. Yeah, he's a little guy. Yeah, he's a really he's a really small guy. But that dude is a beast in the ring. Is he is. Well, yeah, I got to see... I told you I got to see him uh, live, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, back when he was in the Top Prospect Tournament, ROH. Oh, yeah. But, okay, NXT? NXT! All righty. Um, NXT was a pretty good show. Um, yeah, although I'm sick of them having Lacey Evans beat every friggin' buddy. Yeah, so Getting first match, beat Dakota she, Kai. Um, she beats Dakota yeah. Kai, which Garbage. I mean, she's got she's got to win sometimes. I mean, Dakota Kai has been kind of on uh, was kind of on a small streak since uh, losing in her title match to Shayna Baszler. So I mean, I mean, she got to she got to occasionally lose, I guess. Yeah. Because, I mean, I think it'll be a while before Dakota Kai, Dakota Kai gets another shot. But she's still going to get showcased. You know, Captain yeah, no, she's Team cool. Kick. But I, I love her finisher, though. I just hate the name of it. Yeah. I'm a fan. But love me some Dakota Kai. The New Zealander, the Kiwi, with uh, Samoan heritage. Oh, what was that? Sorry. I was saying this, the Kiwi with Samoan uh, heritage, Samoan blood. Yeah, we know how much you like Dakota Kai. Um, Cassius Ono gets a quick knockout victory. Oh, it's some jobber. Yeah, I don't, I don't, it's going to, I don't know what they're doing with that dude. Oh, I think it was just one of those, he hadn't won in a while. Let's give him victory. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what it felt like. But, um, I don't know, like, I think it's about time. They need to go ahead and just move him up to the I main roster watch. and just have him do something, because yeah, there's be no nice. point keeping him in NXT anymore. Yeah, no, he, need, he, needs to, he needs to move along. Either move on to the main roster or, shoot, go back to ROH or something, because... Yeah, yeah, they need to do something with him. He's, he's a big guy. He can come in and be a problem. Yeah. If he did him correctly, but... Shoot, he could go, he could go to ROH and be Chris Hero again. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. But, but yeah, they they need to get him out of NXT. Yeah. He's just and, there. And I like the guy, you know? But, yeah, they need to get him out of there. Um, And then we had a um, triple threat number one contenders match, which... I'm kind of surprised because I thought a while back that this was supposed to be a fatal four-way that would include Bianca Belair. It was, but she wasn't. It said that she wasn't cleared for action. Oh, is she hurt? And all? No, I believe it happened at the same time as her getting married. Oh, that's right. She did get married. Yeah, I forgot the about that because yeah, the last the promo she did was on her um was on her wedding weekend or honeymoon or something like that. 
Yeah, and I feel like it was it was filmed that that taping happened during there. Oh, okay, that makes sense. During a honeymoon, at least, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I was I was thinking I was like, wait a minute. I thought this was supposed to be a a four, fatal four way with Bianca Belair in there. Where's she at? But nah, you just reminded me. Oh, okay. This one. There, there are better ones. Yeah. So um. So yeah, Kyrie Sane, um, defeated Nikki Cross and Candice LeRae, which um, Candice LeRae, she was doing her thing in this match, and honestly, it looked very convincing that she was gonna win, but. You know, after Kyrie Sane gave that last promo after her previous victory over Vanessa Bourne, I figured right then and there after giving that promo that Kyrie Sane was going to be the favorite to get the next title shot. She was the favorite uh, just as soon as they announced that shit. Yeah. So, um, so Kyrie Sane at the I believe it's going to be at the next takeover. That she's yep. gonna get her Perfect. title shot against the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. Beginning of SummerSlam. Um, so they are both one and one against each other, with um, Shayna Baszler getting a victory over Kyrie Sane on NXT TV, and Kyrie Sane defeating her in the finals to win the May Young Classic. Yeah. So this will be the rubber match on NXT Takeover. Um, is this Brooklyn? Yeah, it's Brooklyn. It's Brooklyn. So Brooklyn three. Uh huh. Okay. Or it might be four. Oh, it's Brooklyn four. It's Brooklyn four. Yeah, it's Brooklyn four. Gotcha. So, um, I don't know, man. I I feel like that might be the destination be, where where Kyrie Sane will dethrone Shayna Baszler. I wouldn't be surprised. And they had they had a, they would have another one. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I, I I think I think it's a good chance that it'll happen. But um and Shayna Baszler hasn't let's see, who has she defended the title against? Um Tony Storm most recently. Tony Storm, uh, Dakota Kai. Uh, um Ember Moon. Ember Moon. Uh, somebody else. I thought there was Maybe someone there. else. Yeah, I feel like there's one other person, but I can't remember. Oh, Nikki, Nikki Cross. Cross. Nikki Cross. Yeah. So yeah. She had four title so defenses. Four title defenses. Okay, so this will be her fifth. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, she's defending it. Um, but yeah. And the only other thing that I could see happening is if Kyrie Sane doesn't win, um, at some point, I think Bianca Belair will get the next shot. I won't be surprised. She's basically pushing her. Yeah, because they've been pushing her a good bit. But the only chance that I could see Lacey Evans getting a title shot is for the title to be on a face. Yeah, it'd have to be on Kyrie Sane. Yeah, which would make sense. Yeah. Um... The only thing I just don't like is uh, Lacey Evans' uh, finisher. Yeah, I'm not a big fan either. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's, it's whatever. Yeah. But, um. But yeah, that's, NX, that's, that's NXT. Don't forget, don't forget those. No, it's not. Don't forget about the EC3 promo. Oh, the, I'm sorry. The EC3 Dream promo. promo. Um giving out t-shirts, taking selfies, and then him and Kona Reeves. He was, oh, It wasn't just me, it was uh, EC3 coming off as like a face. Oh yeah, he was totally coming off as a face. It was weird, it was real weird. I don't, I don't know what that was all about. Like, he was totally coming off as a face. Like... I don't get it. So I guess he's going to program with Kona, I guess. Yeah. Could Which, it be the best of friends? Yeah, that's... Or the finest of friends, yeah. That's just which actually it that would have been a cool. I would have liked to see a little crew with the, with him and him and uh, Bianca Belair. Oh, okay. That'd be a good little triple, little little three group. But a just okay, they're not, yeah, they're not gonna do it. I don't know why yeah. I couldn't think of it. I don't. I don't know. I like. I felt like with just with 
the typical EC3 attitude and gimmicks. I thought he was more so a heel, but well, when he says, "I don't need your like," oh, take that shirt. I don't need your money. I'm rich. Yeah, but he also took the selfie with the with the fan, and you know, it was like tag me on Instagram, and you know, yeah, like sure. I don't know if it's just like I guess it's snobbish, but yeah, it was very snobbish. It's, but it's then Triple H, uh, Triple H blue blood in the modern day. But then when you have Kona Reeves, who's another heel, it kind of, you know. It was weird, and him him kind of running him down like those Cubans and Cornigas in there. Like, he was playing him. Like, he was playing Kona. It was interesting. It was real weird. And, and maybe something will develop between the two. Maybe some sort of. There seems to be a few that's about to start because I'm assuming they're going to be facing each other at Brooklyn. Maybe, maybe so. I won't be surprised because I mean, what does these three have else to do though? Because Ricochet is getting put up with uh, Adam Cole, baby. So. Yeah, he's gonna go after that North American title. Yeah, he's gonna be a little busy. Um, who do you think will be next up to be contenders for the tag titles? That I don't know because I couldn't even tell you the tag teams are right now. I mean, they they, did, they had the promo for Street Profits. He had the promo. They had the promo about going back for the titles. So I mean, I'm assuming them. They're going to start too, but there's going to be another team that they start building up too. Just and they to also kinda... did the the oh War the Raiders, promo on War I mean, Raiders. I forgot yeah. about this. Yeah, War, War Raiders and and Street Profits are the the two likely tag teams. There's also the Mighty, but I don't know. It's not happening. I mean, yeah, not against the. Era. And then and then there's Heavy Machinery, which. One of them is injured, so I don't see that happening. Yeah, happen. they they've kind of been downhill. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but the undisputed era is loaded with gold. Yeah, seventeen dream shit was good, but but yeah, it although was... that, the seventeen dream promo reminded me that he's only won one match. <laughs> yeah, and that was against Cash so. Well, um, yeah. That was yeah. A... I mean, yeah. But the, but he's still a fan favorite. True. Love his dreams is shit. I mean, he's a heel, but he's a fan favorite. <laughs> Can't wait to have him on my roster. Yeah, he, he better be in 2K. 2K19. NXT, baby. Um, but anyway, that's all I have for... NXT. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the upcoming May Young Classic. Okay. So, um, we got a couple of competitors that have been announced. Um, so let's go f- through a few of these. Um, the first one announced was Caitlyn, former uh, Divas champ. Yep. Um, who also won uh, the NXT? Um, I think season was it season three? I think season that was for the life of me. But um, but yeah, Caitlyn. Um, been forever since I've seen since we've seen her in the ring. So sure. I don't know, man. Like, do you even can you even picture her going far? I mean, I'm, she'll probably go as far as like uh, Santana went last year, or the other kind of, you know, Abby Lace. Yeah, like the like the classic ones, or the people who have been there before, like you know, the people that come back and they come back. She'll be she'll be around for at least she'll win her first match and then probably lose to another young upstart. That makes Is sense because that, that's what that's what happened second, to um, second or third. that's what happened to what's her face Serena Deeb. Yeah, that's usually what happens to you. Cause she beat um, I forgot who she beat. She beat somebody, and then she lost to um Piper Niven. Yeah, so I see the same thing kind of occurring. I don't see her going very far. Um, we got uh Rhea Ripley making her second appearance. Yeah, she'll definitely go farther. Um, she 
won one match in uh, the previous May Young Classic. And lost to Dakota Kai. And lost to Dakota Kai. Um, I think Rhea Ripley... Um, she'll definitely go farther. You think she'll win two? Uh, depends on if she gets in the second round. Okay. If it's somebody who's kind of established, then no. She's newer. Yeah, but she is signed as well. So I mean, she is. So she has a chance of getting a lot farther just from being signed. Yeah, She'd probably being featured because she hasn't even been mentioned on NXT. So, no. yeah, that's my thing. She won't get so far. I mean, she's not ready for TV yet. Has she? I take it she's probably had some live matches. Yeah, because she's on the tours and stuff, and uh, they because they had her with Aaliyah. She was uh, she's uh, managed by Aaliyah and another tag team with another female competitor. Saw a picture on uh, Twitter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Let's see, the finalist, one of the finalists of American Ninja Warrior, um, Casey Catazzaro. Um. Interesting. Uh, how do you think that'll? work out for her. I mean, she's kind of made a name of herself for herself through American Ninja Warrior. Yeah. Um eh, maybe she'll win one match. Depends on where she's at in the bracket. But I could see her maybe winning a match, you know. Oh yeah. Just to get that notch on her on her gun. <laughs> yeah, either that or she'll lose somebody belt. more established. It just it just kind of depends on who she goes up against. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Oh, a- another name that really has been around for a good while, Nicole Matthews. That name I I do recognize. I haven't seen a lot of her, but that's a name I do recognize. Yeah. Um. And apparently it's been noted that she's had matches with um, competitors like Asuka and Becky Lynch. Interesting. So I have a feeling that she'll definitely um, put a dent be, into this tournament. She'll be like Mercedes Martinez. Yeah. Yeah, she has a, she has a, um, a lot of indie, indie experience. Yeah, she'll be one of those. Go farther. And then there was this one competitor named Jenny. Um, she's from, I think they said she's from London, England. Mm. Um, kind of a. Hello? Yeah, I'm there. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. here. It's got to clear it up for a second. Um, let's see. Oh, and you know. I am super, super excited that she has been announced for this tournament. Major competitor, obviously. One of the amazing big names to come out of stardom, Miss Io Shirai from Japan. Jason's favorite are Japanese wrestlers. So, I am looking forward to her winning the Mae Young Classic. Yes, I said it. Io Shirai is my pick to win Mae Young Classic round two. It's likely, although if they just have two, if they just have Asian superstars come in just to win Mae Young Classic, that's going to be annoying. But it's not just any Asian superstar. It's never just any. Dude, Asian. it's Io Shirai. I don't give a shit. It's Io Shirai. I don't care. Do, do your homework. It's Io Shirai. I don't care. She's just going to go undefeated for a long ass time and then not do nothing on the main roster. I don't care. I think they fooled me last time. They won't fool me again. Ew. Um, other competitors announced. <laughs> so we got uh got this one competitor from South Wales, uh, Tegan Knox, who apparently is nicknamed the girl with the shiniest wizard. Oh god. Oh. 
Oh, that sounds like Nixon Newell. Uh, yeah, that's Nixon Newell. She's British. Is it Nixon Newell? That's who that sounds like. Cause she went. She had the shiniest wizard on her T-shirts when she was in the British scene. Oh yeah, that is Nixon Newell. Yay, Nixon Newell! I knew she was gonna be in there. Cool. Nixon Newell's cool. She's good. First WPW Women's Champion. So. That would also have to mean that maybe her and Dakota Kai will eventually team up. That's right. She's probably getting featured on TV. She's signed, so. Oh, she is signed. Nice. She's signed. Cause she's her, she's our tag team partner at live events. Oh, great. She, so she's signed. She's been doing it for like the last six or seven months or so. Oh, that's good. That's very promising. Mm-hmm. That's very promising. So, that's good. That's really good. Um, apparently, it's been said that uh, weeks after arriving at the performance center, she had tore her ACL, um, which put her on the shelf for about ten months, because she Damn. was originally supposed to be um, competing in the first May Young Classic, but was unable to. But now she um, she's back in the ring. She's ready to go, and she's uh has the opportunity to do some damage into this second season of the May Young Classic. How far do you could you see her going? Mm. I mean, I'm I'm fully expecting I mean, Io Shirai to be in the end of it, so I'm assuming she should be close to that. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. There's about four or five women so far that have been announced. I'm like, okay, you guys are going to be in the finals. Likely, unless something crazy happens. Caitlyn might make it, but I doubt it. But she's one of them. Really? The rest of them are the, are the indie girls and the girls who have been there before. Because Rhea Ripley could, if they don't position an indie girl to face her. Or somebody smaller, because you know they like to do that shit. Because so, if she is a face of Nixon Newell, I can see Nixon Newell going over her. Um, okay. But that's just because they would be trying to push her, which would be cool. And she has like a certain kind of wholesome thing that they might be trying to push, depending on what they do with her character. Mm-hmm. I just thought, I don't know what they're going to do with her as far as until they show on TV what her character is going to be. They'll determine kind of what happens. Yeah, that's a that's a fair fair assessment. But, um, yeah, Tegan Knox is in the Mae Young Classic. Cute. This next woman I am also very excited about, which I could see her going very far, even as far as the semifinals or even the finals. The Virtuosa, the Fujiwara armbar specialist, Diana Perrazzo. Hmm. Interesting. Um... She's had quite a career uh, with Women of Honor in ROH. She'll go. She'll go very far. And if not in the finals. She'll be. She'll be right there. She was originally um, a replacement for the first uh, May Young Classic in case somebody um, got injured. Um, she was initially a replacement. Um, she has had, you know, a few appearances. I want to say a few appearances in the past with WWE, but never like fully signed on. Um, same thing with uh, uh, Impact Wrestling. She had a few appearances there. But the whole time she was mainly signed with um, ROH. Um, a, a graduate from Team Adams Wrestling School, just like uh, Karen Q, Tasha Steeles. Like, yeah. But yeah. Um, Deanna Perrazzo, um, great wrestler, great striker, great uh, submission specialist. Um, I could really see her doing well. Like, she has wrestled, like, with being at the age of 24, she's already wrestled in Japan, England, Puerto Rico, Canada, you know, alongside the United States. And, um, yeah. Like, it's definitely good to see another um, 
It's a mission specialist. She'll, she'll go far just, just for the sheer fact that she was supposed to be an all in. Yeah. And, she, and they, signed, they signed her. Yeah. Like, you know? I definitely hope. Because I really think she's worthy enough to go to um, the, semi, the semifinals or finals of this tournament. Um, so I'm very excited for Deanna Perrazzo. She's signed, so I look forward to see her, how her career will go um, in NXT. Great ta- talent acquisition. Um, This next girl is apparently tall and is a former volleyball player, collegiate volleyball player, Jessica Elabon. Um, she's 5'10". Okay. Um, so she's, she's an athlete. Um, and apparently it's been known that she uh, spent a, a whole year at the performance center and apparently can hang with some of the best. Yeah. So I I know Zilch about her. I don't know if you know anything about her. What was her name again? Jessica Elbon. No. But yeah, um but yeah, she's five ten. Kinda tall. Yeah. So uh but then again, Rhea Ripley's pretty tall as well. Mm Mm-hmm. Actually, she might be Rhea Ripley's uh, tag team partner. I know it was another tall uh, female. Who's tag team partner? Uh, Rhea Ripley. I was talking about she's in a tag team, oh. and they have uh, Aaliyah as their manager. I know it was, it was another because they had her on a, their shoulders. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. They're both rather tall, so I'm assuming it's probably it's likely that that's that's one of the other. She's also her tag team partner. I see. I see. Yeah. And then finally, uh, making her return to the May Young Classics, the six foot tall uh, daughter of Ricky Desperado Gonzalez, Reina Gonzalez, huh. um, who lost in the first round uh, in the first May Young Classic to Nicole Savoy. Yes. Um. I mean, I really don't. Well. She might, depending on who she goes up against. Maybe this time she'll win a match. Maybe. I get lucky. (laughs) I don't really see her doing much. Nah. But I mean, hey, who who knows? Um. So that's pretty much it. But I do want to ask you this: Who would who would you like? To see in the May Young Classic that hasn't been Piper announced. Nevin. You like to see Piper Piper Nevin go go at it for yep. a second time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. I would love to see Mia Yim back in the tournament. Bet you would. Um. I would love to see Tessa Blanchard back in the tournament. That'd be cool. She ain't gonna have it because she's an impact. Yeah, I know. It would have been nice, though. Um, have. What's her face? Eldrick. Who? Eldrick's daughter. Eldrick's daughter. Uh, Authors of Pain. Um, oh, uh, Rachel Evers? Yeah, Everett, yeah. Oh, Paul God. Ellering's I daughter. Oh. Ellering. I always um, mess with those names. Is she still signed? I didn't think I she, was, she was still That's signed. Same. I don't think she is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she's probably not. Okay. Because she, I mean, she would have she been nice. Um, I don't think, I don't see folks like Dakota Kai being back in there. Um, nah. Um, you know who I would love to see just randomly? Who's that? Rosemary. That'd be cool. Rosemary, or even Chris Wolf. Oh, dude. I would love to see Chris Wolf in this tournament. I don't know who that is. Chris Wolf. I don't she, say she, that name she's, a, she's another one that came from stardom. Oh. But she's now doing, like, indie stuff. But 
I would love to see Chris Wolf in this tournament. Mm, I'm not familiar. Um, yeah, you should should look up Chris Wolf. She's cool. Um, I was also thinking. Uh, I can't think of, I can't think of anyone else that I would like to see. Maybe Kaylee Ray. Kaylee Ray would be cool. Yeah. She get she gets another shot. But um But I think she signed to uh that British wrestling company that has Piper Niven. Yeah, I think you're right. Um World of Wrestling. Yeah. You know what'd be really cool? It would be cool to see at least one legend back in this tournament, and I couldn't think of one better fitting than uh Molly Holly. That'd be cool. I think that'd be nice. You know, kind of like what the Cruiserweight Classic did with Tajiri. Was it? Kind of like how the Cruiserweight Classic did with um, the Brian Kendrick and Tajiri. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the Mayan Classic had old wrestlers. said uh, Deb and... Yeah. Um, Serena else. Deep. Serena yeah. Deep. Uh, Mer yeah. I mean, Mercedes Martinez has been wrestling a long time. Yeah, but I mean, like, WWE people you're talking about, like... Oh, I see. Molly Holly. Yeah, I, I I would love to see her in this tournament. Doesn't mean she have to go far, but it, it'd be nice to just, you know, to see her, you know, give give it another run. Um, yeah. Or, even other than that, you know who, I would, who else I would love to see? I know, <coughs> I know it's I... not going to happen, but even A.J. Lee. Yep. AJ Lee would be nice. That'd be great, but definitely not. But, but yeah. So, um, so far that's how many people? That's let's see. I'm just trying to see how many people that is. One, two, three, four. So that's ten people announced so far. Still got uh, 22 to go. So, a lot to look forward to. But yeah. that's all that I have. Um, do you have anything else you want to speak out on? Um, on any I, other promotions? Anything? I, mm, thinking, nope, I do not have anything. Uh, was there ever any update on um, Hiromu Takahashi? Not that I saw, no. Okay. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, alrighty. Um, if you don't have anything, I don't have anything. I'd say that concludes this episode. What? So, um, hopefully next week will be even more exciting. I mean, yeah. I know it'll be a while for the next pay-per-view, but hey. Yeah. Maybe it'll be better. Yeah, never know. SummerSlam typically is big anyway. I just hope that, you know, that plus, you know, take over Brooklyn 4. I can't believe they're already at 4. I mean, we'll be seeing uh, Tommaso Ciampa versus Aleister Black for the NXT Championship very soon. Very soon. Like, very soon. Yeah, they had a promo for it this week, so... Oh, yeah, they had a promo for it. <laughs> but, um... And... Speak to movie or a week after? It's very soon. It's before the takeover, for sure. Yep. It might be next week, actually. <laughs> I think it is. I think it is Wednesday's Yeah, episode. it's next week. Yeah. But... Alrighty, brother. It's been a pleasure, as usual. You know it. Um, for the, uh, everybody, thank you so much for, um, for tuning in. Uh, we will continue to bring content and more exciting episodes of the Team Galgo Wrestling Podcast in the near future. But until then, for Blitzball Champ and Hollywood Cinema, we will catch y'all next time. Yeah, have a good one, party people. Peace out. Motor City. Oh, boy.